The National Desk, America's News, now. I move to adjourn the impeachment trial of Alejandro N. Mayorkas, sine die, and I ask for the yeas and nays. Do the Democrats get the outcome they were looking for in the historic impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas? A diabetic breakthrough, the possibly life-changing research that could have patients breathing easier about getting their insulin. And a new song in the style of the Beatles, who's behind the familiar names emulating the Fab Four. This is the National Desk America's News Now. I'm Amira David. Over before it even began, the Senate has dismissed all impeachment charges against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, ending the House GOP efforts to remove him from office. On this vote, the yeas are 51, the nays are 49. The motion is to agree to. The Senate sitting as the court of impeachment stands adjourned sine die. The House impeached Mayorkas in February, making him the second cabinet member in U.S. history to be impeached. Republicans wanted a full trial, arguing Mayorkas had willfully refused to enforce immigration laws and had breached trust by saying the border was secure. But senators argued the impeachment articles were unconstitutional. A police officer in Albany, New York, is recovering from his injuries after being ambushed by a driver early this morning. The police chief said the officer went up to a parked car that he'd been following earlier because it was speeding. A man then came out and shot the officer in the leg. The officer shot back and killed him. Their identities have not yet been released. The family of Ricky Cobb, the man shot and killed during a Minnesota traffic stop, has filed a $25 million wrongful death lawsuit against the two state troopers involved. Troopers trying to remove Cobb from his vehicle over a domestic order protection violation during that July traffic stop. Police say Cobb tried to flee the scene in his car. One of the officers shooting at the vehicle several times before Cobb eventually crashed and died from his gunshot wounds. Investigators found a gun in Cobb's car, but no body camera footage shows him holding the gun in the lead up to the shooting. Lawyers for the family say troopers should have attempted to de-escalate the situation before resorting to violence. Ohio's law to ban minors from getting gender changing treatment has been temporarily blocked by a federal court. The ACLU had appealed to keep the SAFE Act from taking effect next week and says the law is unconstitutional. The Supreme Court did allow a similar law in Idaho to go into effect earlier this week. The Ohio federal court will hold a hearing in two weeks to fully consider blocking or keeping the law intact. Anti-Semitism on college campuses was once again front and center in Washington, D.C. today. Here's national correspondent Kayla Gaskins. It was the president of Columbia University's turn to sit in the hot seat on Capitol Hill. Columbia strives to be a community free of discrimination and hate. Answering concerns regarding reports of rising anti-Semitism on campus following Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel. The anti-Semitism on our campus makes me sick to my stomach. And we are taking steps to address it. Columbia, the center of several viral videos depicting alleged anti-Semitism. Columbia's leadership team attempting to avoid the fate of Harvard and UPenn, whose presidents lost their positions following a similar hearing in December, where they were seen to sidestep a question about campus protesters chanting Intifada, which critics say is a direct call for the genocide of Jews. Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. Clearer answers were given Wednesday. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Columbia's code of conduct. Dr. Shafiq. Yes, it does. MIT's president sat for the same December hearing as Harvard and UPenn, but managed to keep her position. We spoke with MIT grad student Talia Khan. It's a much deeper problem than just getting rid of the president. And we've seen that at Harvard and Penn in the past few months. Even though the president's gone, 
uh, you know, the, the climate hasn't shifted so dramatically. Meanwhile, the University of Southern California canceling their valedictorian speech, citing safety concerns. The Muslim student says she's being silenced by anti-Palestinian hatred. Jewish students at USC say she supports the abolishment of Israel. The abolishment of the state of Israel, I'd like to clarify is the abolishment of an apartheid system. The Anti-Defamation League and the FBI have reported historic levels of anti-Semitism since October 7th. The ADL says that spike shows no signs of slowing. I'm Kayla Gaskins reporting for the National Desk, America's News Now. On the Senate side, a Boeing whistleblower gave scathing testimony against the airplane maker at a hearing looking at Boeing's safety practices, which have come under scrutiny after a door panel blew off during an Alaska Airlines flight back in January. The NTSB chair reiterated to Congress last week that Boeing has said there are no records documenting the removal of the Alaska Airlines door. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. This is a criminal cover-up. Records do in fact exist. I know this because I've personally passed them to the FBI. Meanwhile, the Federal Aviation Administration briefly grounded all Alaska and Horizon air flights this morning due to technical problems. Alaska Airlines says it requested the ground stop after an issue occurred during an upgrade of its weight calculation system. The advisory lasted for less than an hour. It's not clear how many flights were affected, but the airline says residual delays are expected. The Austin Bergstrom International Airport is one of the first four airports in the United States to receive new technology to enhance runway safety. The FAA says the focus of the new airfield surveillance system is to reduce the risk of runway incursions by improving air traffic controllers situational awareness. The system will be installed by July. Dozens of other airports will receive it by the end of 2025. Well, scammers, they have been hard at work tricking job seekers on sites like, like LinkedIn. Some victims have even had their identities stolen. National correspondent Janae Bowens joins us with an in-depth look at the issue. Kira Momini told her followers she was desperate for work, so she didn't think it was strange when who she thought was a job recruiter asked her for a background check before an interview. I literally have been applying for jobs. I got my identity stolen through a LinkedIn ad. Of course, Momini never got that job interview. And LinkedIn admits scams are a problem for the platform. So now they have my social, my driver's license, my face scan. My bank called me and I had um, like $2,000 taken out of it. That was marked for fraud. The Better Business Bureau estimates 14 million people are exposed to employment scams every year, costing folks $2 billion. Now, when it comes to LinkedIn, they are beefing up security. Now, a recruiter can actually become verified on LinkedIn. There's a little gray badge right next to their name, and it says right under their name, verified recruiter. But with artificial intelligence helping scammers make job ads look more authentic, job seekers must be vigilant. You should never give someone who is saying that they're a recruiter information like your social security number or give them information like your uh, bank account information. So you don't end up like Momini. Be careful out there. I just kind of want to spread this. Um, make sure people can hear my story. Hopefully it doesn't happen to them. Experts say you should make sure a recruiter's email address matches up with the company they say they work for. Also look for typos and messages and be suspicious if you only talk to one person during the interview process. I'm Janae Bowens reporting. Janae, thank you. And this just in, the DOJ will pay out $100 million to 100 victims of disgraced former Team USA gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser. This after the Justice Department agreed to pay for the FBI's failures to properly investigate reports of Nasser's sexual assaults against America's top gymnasts and others. If the agreement becomes final, it would push the total amount of settlements in this sprawling legal case against Nasser to more than $1 billion. And Senator Bob Menendez's trial on multiple bribery charges that starts next month. According to court documents recently filed, his defense intends to blame his wife Nadine for withholding information, leading him to believe nothing illegal was happening. Prosecutors had wanted the pair to be tried together, but their trials have been split due to an undisclosed health issue for Nadine Menendez. 
Senator Menendez's trial begins on May 6th. His wife's begins in July. Coming up, protecting kids on social media is something just about everyone in Congress can get behind. So why aren't they passing laws to do it? We'll take a look at what could be getting in the way. Then why nearly half a million Ford SUVs and trucks are being recalled and what owners should do. Plus, an unexpected duo helped deliver a New York woman's baby on the side of a highway when she couldn't make it to the hospital. We'll tell you about this heartwarming story after the break. Child online safety back in focus on Capitol Hill on Wednesday. House members holding another hearing on legislation aimed at protecting kids. The parents in the room, many of whom have lost children to suicide or overdose, are growing frustrated with Congress's inaction. National correspondent Atral Nashar has more on why Congress is struggling to get the job done. In 2021, Sam Chapman and his wife Laura thought one benefit of COVID lockdowns was that their kids were safe at home. Little did they know, a different kind of danger lurked in their 16-year-old son Sammy's phone. A dealer reached out to our son on Snapchat and delivered a lethal dose of fentanyl to our home like it was a pizza after we were asleep. His little brother found him dead the next day on the floor. Since then, Chapman is a full-time activist pushing for the passage of Sammy's Law, named for his son. It would require third-party safety apps on any social media or gaming platform accessible to kids so parents get alerts about dangerous activity. It's one of 10 laws aimed at protecting kids online that were in focus during a hearing Wednesday before the House Energy and Commerce Committee. For years, Democrats and Republicans in Congress have gone after social media companies for allegedly being reckless with child safety. Headline making hearings, dozens of bills introduced, but no substantial protections have actually become law. Here in Congress, it's hard to pass laws. We can file bills, we can work on all of this, and as you hear, we all agree, but it still takes, you know, the speaker to at the end of the day to get the bill to the floor. This Congress has been called one of the most ineffective in history and little is expected of lawmakers eager to hit the campaign trail. In fact, this week, the House may be taking some of its last major votes before November. Some of the leaders on this social media issue are not running for re-election. You're retiring after this Congress. Is this an issue that you're going to go out swinging, doing everything you can to get something passed into law? Absolutely. It's long overdue, but it's just like we have to act. The powerful tech law lobby opposes much of the legislation and advocates for alternative policies that put more onus on parents to monitor their kids. It's really a Sisyphean challenge for a bunch of parents to fight against these big interests. But when you lose a kid, there's nothing that's going to stop you. We are a political force in 2024, and I believe that the politicians are listening. On Capitol Hill, I'm Atra Al-Nashar for the National Desk, America's News Now. And President Biden says his administration will block a Japanese company from acquiring U.S. steel. He made this announcement while visiting the United Steelworkers Union in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
today. Biden also called for higher tariffs on Chinese steel and aluminum to protect American producers from a flood of cheap imports. My U.S. trade representative is investigating trade practices by the Chinese government regarding steel and aluminum. If that investment confirms these anti-competitive trade practices, then I'm calling on her to consider tripling the tariff rates for both steel imports and aluminum imports from China. 450,000 Ford compact SUVs and pickup trucks are being recalled. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said Ford discovered an undetected low battery charge that could lead to a loss of hazard lights or cause a loss of drive power, increasing the risk of a crash. Ford Bronco Sport SUVs made between 2021 and 2024 and the Ford Maverick pickup trucks made between 2023 and 2024 are the models impacted here. Dealerships will fix that problem for free. Seafood chain Red Lobster is considering filing for bankruptcy to restructure its debt. That's according to a report from Bloomberg. Restaurant Business Online says the company has been struggling in the past few years because of leadership issues and strategic missteps. The restructuring talks are ongoing and no official decision has been made. And right now, our first look at dramatic video out of an unprecedented storm that wreaked havoc on Dubai. We, had, we saw visitors wading through floodwaters following historically heavy rainfall in the United Arab Emirates. And take a look at this. You can see that video now. Vehicles just trying to drive through, looking, looking more like boats than cars here. We're talking about a year's worth of rain in that forced closure of the airport affecting the world's busiest airfield for international travel. Tonight, many questioning if the extreme weather was caused by cloud seeding, the method by which government planes fly through clouds, burning salt flares to help produce precipitation. Officials at the country's meteorological center have denied that claim thus far. Tesla plans to ask shareholders to reinstate CEO Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package. A Delaware judge avoided it earlier this year, calling the pay, quote, deeply flawed. The company also intends on asking shareholders to approve moving Tesla's incorporation status from Delaware to Texas. Tesla is hiring a proxy solicitor and could spend millions of dollars on a campaign to help secure the votes for those two proposals. Toronto Raptors forward Jonte Porter has been banned for life from the NBA for betting on games. The league had been investigating an $80,000 bet earlier this season on a specific game that Porter would not achieve certain stats. The league found Porter had given the better inside information and then removed himself from that game early because of a, quote, illness. The bet would have won $1.1 million, but it was frozen and not paid out. Porter is the first NBA player since 1966 to receive a betting-related lifetime punishment. A new way to deliver insulin could help people living with diabetes avoid painful injections. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares with us how this medication can be inhaled. Hey there, hello to you. James Jones now uses this inhaled insulin. He has type 1 diabetes and says it's been life changing. Now I eat however I want. So that's the biggest change. I'm not like afraid to take it or know that it's going to hurt because it's really painless and super convenient to take. You just saw how convenient. James is a college freshman. We caught up with him heading to class with his Lego project. He's majoring in aerospace engineering at Ohio's University of Cincinnati. He says while on campus, his Afreza inhalation powder, as it's officially called, is perfect. Afreza provided these images. You can fit it in your pocket, carry it around just like the shots. Actually, it takes up less space than the shots, so I really don't see a downside. For it, like, and ask your doctor about it. From seven, a continuous glucose monitor connected to his phone shows blood sugar numbers throughout the day are well controlled with this inhaled insulin. That's something endocrinologist Dr. Harold Pretorius told me is true for most patients when dosed properly. The insulin is absorbed through the lungs into the bloodstream. 
And so the advantage of that is more rapid absorption. That absorption is not harmful to your lungs. This is a spirometer, which is a convenient handheld device that checks the lung function. Doctors check your lungs every six months to be sure. And compared to insulin injections, it dissipates more rapidly also. So that avoids, uh, to a certain extent, the number one complication of insulin administration, which is hypoglycemia. James has noticed this kind of control. His average blood sugar number, also called the hemoglobin A1C, now within normal ranges. When I started a Fresa, it was 6'8", and then three months later, it was a 5.7. Something critical for a healthy diabetes future and what is likely going to be a healthy Lego building engineering success. Couple important notes. You may need prior authorization for insurance coverage of this inhaled insulin but it is now available to those on Medicare with the new mandatory lower cost requirements of no more than $35 for insulin expense. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Coming up, the states with the biggest increases in acres burned by wildfires and the reasons for the change when we come back. We have reporters all across the country in your neighborhoods covering the issues that matter most to you. We're taking the pulse of America and we begin in Seattle, where a high school teacher is now on paid admin leave after making some controversial comments. Earlier this month, Ian Galosh was confronted by the conservative group Accuracy in Media, asking him about his controversial posts on the Hamas attack in Israel on October 7th. Well, then was what happened to Israel on October 7th justified? Yes. <laughs> the rape of women at a music festival was justified. Where's the evidence that there was rape? You don't think there was any rape? Where's the evidence that there was rape? Okay. Were women murdered at the music festival? Was that justified? Yes. After his remarks went viral on social media, Seattle Public Schools said they started an immediate, appropriate investigation to determine the facts. Ruthie Edwards says there were more than 5,300 wildfires in North Carolina in 2023, drought conditions contributing to that number. She's the district forester representing seven western counties. She's aware of the study by Housefresh, a publication that watches indoor air quality. It finds North Carolina to have the second biggest increase in wildfire acres burned last year, second only to California. It says in 2022, wildfires burned more than 11,000 acres in North Carolina, but more than 70,000 acres last year, a jump of 529%. Edwards says the Forest Service can't validate those figures, but is in agreement it's human activity causing most of them. 99%, says the Forest Service, careless debris burning being the biggest culprit. She advises more diligence. 
How's Miss Dolly doing? Good. New York State Troopers Joseph Vinci and Alex Mullen visiting baby Dahlia at FF Thompson Hospital the day after they helped deliver her in a car at a Lowe's parking lot in Waterloo. Ashley Finnamore says she was in denial that she was in active labor until it was too late. We left our house and made it about 20 minutes before I said, I'm not gonna make it to the hospital. The troopers were just a mile away when the call came in, but the ambulance crew was a bit further behind. At that point in time, we realized it was gonna come down to us. Uh, the ambulance was en route, but we knew we were gonna be the guys. So we did the best we could and baby Dahlia is here today looking beautiful as ever. They delivered. No pun intended. Coming up, Americans are flocking to Costco to buy gold bars. Yes, gold bars. How much money they're bringing in for the retailer? We'll tell you on the other side. Forget groceries, there's something else flying off Costco's store shelves. Gold, gold bars. That is, the big box retailer began selling the pure 24 karat bars, priced at about $2,000 each last fall. And amidst stubborn inflation and economic uncertainty, the interest in the commodity is surging right now, but you won't believe by just how much. Take a look at this new equity research shows Costco has generated 100 to $200 million per month in gold bar sales. For perspective, the company sold $100 million for the entire quarter ending in November of last year. So it's selling for about seven to eight times as much now. Costco says it can't keep them in stock and gold could be about $3,000 an ounce by the end of the year. And it is Lennon McCartney 2.0, the sons of the famous Beatles legends coming together to release music for the very first time. James is the son of Paul McCartney and his wife, Linda Sean Ono is the son of John Lennon and wife Yoko. Acoustic song called Primrose Hill, and it certainly is pleasing to the ears. That does it for this edition of the National Desk. Thank you so much for joining.